everybody. Welcome to the Barcoding Huddle. I'm your host, Jody Costa. I'm the VP of Marketing for Barcoding Incorporated. And Barcoding is a supply chain automation and innovation company dedicated to helping organizations be more efficient, accurate, and connected. And today for our huddle conversation, I have my, you know, the great honor of um, having our partner Data Logic join me. Uh, and we're going to have an engaging conversation around enterprise mobility. And so uh, and, you know, without further ado, I'd love for my panelists to go ahead and join me on camera. Um, so we'll go ahead and let those folks join and we'll get started here. So welcome, everybody. Welcome to the huddle. It's great to see your faces and thanks for joining me today. Um, I know here in Baltimore, it's a nice sunny November day. So it's a great day to talk enterprise mobility. Um, but one of the things that we usually like to do to kind of kick off our conversations is just start with some basic intros and make sure that we, you know, our audience knows who's here with me today. Um, so Peter, I'm going to actually start with you since you're my fellow barcoder. Um, you want to go ahead and give us a quick intro into who you are, what your role is, and um, what you're excited to talk about. Sure. Um, I'm the senior supply chain architect here at Barcoding and the director of partner solutions. And I'm excited to talk about all things supply chain. I mean, it's an exciting year and, it, and it's going to be an exciting decade. Right. True supply chain geek on our team, right, Peter? <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, next, I'd like for Tom to introduce himself. Tom? Okay. I'm the mobility application engineering manager for the Americas for Data Logic. Excellent. And where are you located, Tom? I am in Dallas, Texas. Coming to us live from Dallas. Awesome. Well, welcome. We're happy to have you here. Raju, please introduce yourself. Hi, Jody. Uh, thank you for uh, hosting the um, data logic team uh, here at the Barcoding Hub. Um, basically, I'm a director of product marketing and management at Data Logic. And uh, I'm based out of Chicago, obviously. It's November. I, you can expect the weather how it's going to be in Chicago. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to stay warm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we do know that. We have an office and Peter's out in Wisconsin, so <laughs> he gets it. I think I'm I'm soaking in those last rays, but um, thank you so much for being part of this uh, and uh, for joining today. Data Logic is obviously one of our top partners here at Barcoding Inc. And we're excited to talk about enterprise mobility today. Um, really specifically talking about enterprise mobility and how it's really driving digital transformation forward for companies. Um, and, and, you know, we're sitting in November, you know, 2021, and we're looking ahead. And so I think this conversation is going to be great for IT and ops leaders who are trying to prepare for next year. And so we'll try to address some of the questions that have come in um, around that as well. But, you know, digital transformation, a big, big title, right? I mean, we're not going to solve all of digital transformation here no. today, right? That's for sure. But for me and from my perspective, and I'll, I'll ask you guys to comment, um, digital transformation to me is really about driving towards digital maturity and also allowing, uh, you know, enabling your organization to be able to take advantage of the data that's in, that's, that's available all around us, right? And this is where our industry, the AIDC, the automatic identification industry, this is where our strength always was, and that's really what we're bringing to the table, you know, still today. And I think it's more vital, frankly, than ever before, right, Peter? I mean, it's oh yeah, it's everywhere. It's, I mean, not only is it everywhere, but it, I mean, supply chain is front page news now. And for years, we used to be, you know, back page if we were lucky under the want ads, mm -hmm. um, and now we're front and center everywhere. Yeah, and I I'd love for us to kind of kick <laughs> off this conversation, just talking a little bit about what we're seeing out there. Obviously, supply chain is top news, um, digital transformation has been occurring at a much more rapid pace um, as organizations know that they need inventory accuracy. Um, we saw that throughout the pandemic response. So um, Raju, I think I'll start with you and kind of maybe comment on what you're seeing out there in your role at Data Logic and you know, kind of give us some context of what's going on right now. Thanks, Judy. Um, I've seen uh, some of your previous sessions and uh, I've seen some of the questions came from viewers. And obviously a lot of viewers are familiar with this industry for four out of notion. So as the aspect of the, basically how the, the industry four auto is evolving, uh, digital transformation becomes um, pretty much a crux of uh, what uh, finally, um, how it um, you know aligns with uh, how industry want to 
improve their efficiency or productivity operational efficiency and all so uh, so far the thing what we did at uh, the industry did they were building blocks they were developing things to um, you know improve the performance of the processes methods and things we do and obviously digital transformation i believe it will be the glue which is going to bring all this together and then trying to improve the operational efficiency of the uh, whatever the organization could be it could be a manufacturing organization it could be a warehousing transportation logistics and obviously barcoding knows the supply chain side of things anywhere in the industry how you want to improve the processes improve the efficiencies and uh, i'm i'm looking at uh, aspects of the digital transformation now there are companies which are taking it not only just to improve the operational efficiency how do we use digital transformation to do more revenue generation side also i think for today's conversation probably we will stick with the operation side of things how the yeah. efficiency are going to play out and obviously how data logic is trying to do and the barcoding how we all fit into this big picture and help our customers and help our partners to make it uh, a reality for them and make it uh, efficient to improve their processes and all yeah really well said i mean i think something that resonates for me is this concept of operational excellence and it's something that we've been focused on as well tom i'm curious um if you want to kind of comment as well maybe piggyback on what raju has been talking about in your perspective in terms of what's been going on what you're seeing today um and how companies can kind of reach for that digital transformation but really that operational excellence you know believe it or not we still see people that are using pen pencil and paper I do believe it. <laughs> Everywhere, yeah. It happens it happens all the time, you know, and it's come on people, you got to get on board. Uh but those people that that have uh, have had uh mobile solutions um uh, are understanding that they have to change. Yeah. So we're we're all uh, getting on board the the Google wagon, if you will. Um and enterprise mobility is a big part of that, um uh, which we'll talk more about later on in this presentation. Yeah. I mean what I'm seeing is people are trying to put all the pieces together and recognize that it's not just improving my efficiency that matters. It's improving everyone's efficiency. So if I can take advantage of what my supply chain partners are doing, whether it's labeling or RFID whatever it might be, I can use that to improve my operations. Mm -hmm. But everything that I do to improve my operations in turn should help somebody else down the road. Um, I mean, this stuff continues to flow onward, and if they can capitalize on it, the whole supply chain, you know, achieves more value and reduces their costs. So we're seeing a lot of that realization come across, where no longer are people trying to stand up a point source solution that just solves their problem. They're looking upstream and downstream, going, "Hey, they've got source labeling going on. Can I use that source labeling? Um, or we're doing source labeling. Is this compliant to what my customers use?" Yeah, I mean, I don't think I, I, if if anyone was unclear of how connected we all are, um, it's certainly th those those doubts have been dashed. So um, yeah, more connected than ever, more collaborative than ever in terms of trading partners. And and I also think, you know, something that's interesting as you were talking, Peter. I mean, I think that in the supply chain, you know, this cooperativeness really does benefit everyone, and everyone is trying to at the end of the day. we drive you know build these efficiencies in to improve our customers experience right so ultimately each and every one of us is a consumer right and all of us should um have better experiences as we as these things kind of move down the chain so um definitely a lot of cooperation and i think you know to tom's point there is still pen and paper out there and and i think what's interesting is if you look at a large enterprise you see maybe parts of the enterprise that are very digitally mature right yes. and then other parts of the enterprise maybe the warehouse that are not right and so you we we run into this all the time where you know a company that you wouldn't guess is doing all kinds of space age stuff over here and then they're recording inventory on pen and paper right so um i want to talk about how enterprise mobility really comes into play for organizations like that Well there's one stepping stone in between there which is whether recording it in excel spreadsheets instead. Oh yeah, excel. Uh, yeah. yeah. But that oh, still sure. doesn't get the mobile. I mean you've just right, basically right. made a shared document instead of a piece of paper that's stuck on a desk. But it's right. still not mobility, it's still not ubiquitous. We we got to do better. Yeah. Yep. Tom yeah. I, I, or, or Raju, I, go ahead. Sorry. I wanted to jump into comment yeah. on exactly to what you guys are talking about. I I think this is where basically um, how in the value chain we are all involved 
So as OEMs, we had to create the tools. And obviously, as uh, you guys who are implementation specialists, you will be helping the end companies and enterprises to do actually implement the digital transformation techniques to improvise their operational efficiencies. So this is where I guess uh, we, um, um, like Tom was saying, on now the AID space is more and more moving into Android, which is the de facto so OS uh, we are all using. So uh, the, uh, the good thing is until probably release five, release six of Android, Google was not focusing as much as an enterprise tool, but uh, now they got the queue, they got the um, uh, basically users uh, um, uh, asking for it and they've done a uh, phenomenal job to take up uh, some of the tools uh, to help the enterprises. At the same time, people like us, the data logic and all, what we have done is we have basically taken the input, what customers are feeling the pain and how to solve their problems. We have developed our own tools and I'm sure uh, Tom is going to talk about more uh, in, in depth uh, of these tools. Like uh, the tools mainly I want to mention is like scan to deploy OEM config and all. Basically what it does is the enterprises want to create rules, enterprise want to track their uh, users, enterprise wanted to you make their customers use the application in such a way that it makes them easy to manage, easy to efficiently deploy the processes and all. So that's where uh, some of the tools we did, as well as the uh, with the, how Google deployed this Android Enterprise recommended aspects of it. Together, I think uh, we basically are trying to see how to help the industries and our, our customers to deploy all these devices they are basically purchasing and uh, trying to give it to their, uh, uh, their basically their workers. Uh, mm -hmm. That is where basically will be the crux of how they can replicate the digital transformation with from other other industries, how they are doing it, and they can bring it to their enterprises and make it successful kind of thing. Tom, maybe this is where I I, I, I definitely can use you because you work with the pre-sales, post-sales, <laughs> and some of the implementation side of the customers. So you can talk about your experiences and how we use, how we bring it to basically to the fruition, all these uh, tools we're developing. Well, so it starts with Android Enterprise recommended devices, right? And that's some, you know, that we, we have to make sure that we play by Google's rules. Uh, every time we come out with a new OS, it gets blessed by Google. And if it is, then it's Android Enterprise recommended. Uh, well, like Raji was talking about, we have our own tools that use OEM config. That is, um, we'll go a little bit uh, deeper on that. So OEM config is a construct between Google and the EMMs. Right, mm -hmm. because the EMMs got tired of having to write, you know, APIs to every time a, a manufacturer changed some device setting or added something to their device settings. They All have, right. So uh, we're, we're talking here about enterprise mobile device management or yes, or, or MDM. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Right. So even the MDM is the precursor to EMM or enterprise mobility manager. So these kinds of things that we also include in our scan to deploy tool, it is the same, right? So whenever we publish a OEM config APK to the Play Store, we also publish it to our GitHub that we use in our, our own tool to configure devices. So everybody plays together, right? Mm -hmm. There's more to that story. <laughs> we, it, we could talk all day on that because Android it, Enterprise it, is not a small okay. thing. And yeah. it, it starts at device ownership, okay? And maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, Peter, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about this too, and just catching folks up, but just in case there's any um, doubt, the, the industry, our industry, and, and we're talking, and when we talk about enterprise mobility, there's been a clear um, path, and that path is Android. So yeah. if, if, if you didn't get that memo over the last few years, um, Android is, is, the, is the kind of a standard, at, you know, so to speak. Um, in, in our industry, so. And, and let me kind of interject in that. I mean, the whole purpose of, of the mobility platform is to, to create a, a workflow that's in the hands of the user who's committing the work, right? Mm -hmm. So by bringing barcode scanning and a screen and a keyboard to that environment, they can actually collect data and you know perform their tasks in situ where they're actually doing work, right? right. Um, now there's a simplification here because there's a lot of things needed infrastructure wise to set that up. We've in the past seen Windows CE devices and Telnet inter interplays. Uh, thankfully, those have gone away. We've seen people trying to lever into that space using uh, Apple mobile devices. And 
although that's a great proof of concept, it's just not meant for the enterprise. It really doesn't stand up. And the operating system isn't meant for that type of a shared device environment. It just isn't. It's just not designed for that. And Android for the enterprise is. It could either be a user-owned deployed device that has a work running on top of it, or it could be a company-owned device that's used by multiple people with a single sign-on or a multiple sign-on scenario that's secure in their environment. Now let's talk security while we're at it. Not only do you have to stand up this device so that you can access those resources, whether it's an app that you download or whether it's a browser-based environment for, for cloud-based systems, um, either way, you have to have a secure infrastructure so that that data and those users stay within the four walls of what you're trying to accomplish here. And as a whole, data logic and barcoding have worked together to make that as simple as possible for the end user because we know how to navigate that path. We know how to eliminate a lot of the extraneous choices that you might make because you don't know what you're doing and say, hey, here's the easy path. This is the way things work best and smoothest because we've done this a thousand times or more. Um, and the data logic tools are great for that. I mean, they really help set up the standards that you can replicate across multiple devices and multiple fleets. And that's another place where we, we kind of play into that because it's fairly easy if you follow the primrose path to set up a single device. And it mm -hmm. takes a certain amount of time. If you'd like to send out 30 of those devices, you can multiply that primrose path 30 times. Right. Or you can in invest in uh, a managed service provider like Barcoding who will say, tell us, you know, we'll work with you to make that primrose path, make that golden image, and then we'll deploy it at scale for however many de devices you want mm -hmm. and make sure that they arrive queued up and ready to go as assets in your system so that you can start work with them right away. I mean, that's really important to get from the point of, we'd like to be able to do work to actually doing work using mobile devices. Totally, and that's, that's the interesting part, right? So if organizations are looking at digital transformation and expanding the use of mobile into different areas of their organization, they have to keep in mind that there's lots of components there's some things that are foundational or there's some things that are infrastructure, but then there's also this concept of how do we get people to be able to use them quickly mm -hmm. and efficiently, right? And I think, Tom, this is probably a good time for you to kind of dive in a little bit more into those details of what Data Logic's, you know, kind of perspective has been. So maybe flush out a little bit more on uh, when we're talking about how do we get people prepared to go live? What's, what's Data Logic been doing to kind of help in that front? Well, let's let's start with Android Enterprise where it where it began, which is Android Five. Okay, mm -hmm. with the invent of device ownership. All right, so Google says, you know what? We're not going to do this device admin thing anymore, where everybody can willy nilly do whatever they want with devices. Device ownership uh, requires a device policy controller. Okay, which is the which is the agent we we see today is uh, whether uh, you're a SOTI or an AirWatch or whatever EMM you decide to go with, that is a device policy controller, just like our scan and deploy studio is a device policy controller. And each one of those platforms have an agent that's on the device. Together, they uh, define the policy. You define the policies actually in the console or whatever uh, you're choosing, but it gets pushed down to the agent that's running on the device and it applies the policies that you decided you need in your organization, okay? Most of the time, that's going to be what used to be called a corporate-owned single-use device, but now it's called dedicated devices. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, that's what we see. We, we don't typically run across, I don't know, Peter, maybe you, maybe you have a different experience, but most of the time, in, in my experience, uh, customers, that's all they use. They, they don't have user profiles, typically. I don't know, maybe, maybe you have a different story to sh share on that. Yeah, but the, the one place I do see user profiles coming in is in field service, where the not only is the, the mobile device mobile, but the worker is mobile from place to place and context to context. And having them juggle multiple devices for personal use and communications use and for you know, enterprise use is ridiculous. So they use a unified device and they've got multiple applications running on that device and they use it for personal communications as well. Sometimes it's a, a BYO, sometimes company provides it, but um, the, it's still Android Enterprise and it's still monitored and managed in that same way from a corporate level viewpoint so that there's no, root, there's no place for exposure there um, on a security level. Right. So, so, so regardless, there is always going to be a, um, there's an app running on the, when you pull it out of a box, 
okay, and you get to the hi there screen, there's an app running. Okay, when you scan a QR code, it's going to have a certain signature. Okay, it's in the data logic world, that could either be a scan to deploy QR code that would take you down that path, or it could be a QR code that gets you automatically enrolled into an EMF. And we have tools at Data Logic that would pr provide you a QR code that would automatically get you onto your preferred network, whether it's a WAN or a wireless LAN, and automatically enroll you into that EMF. Okay. Um, and I think that's all I need to say about that. that yeah. That's definitely a, a really good approach to, to enterprise mobility deployments. Um, it's a good tool set to have. And, and it's part of the way we kind of go to market with what we do with, with data logic devices and many others. I mean, we run an EMM. I mean, that's, that's what we do to uh, allow us to manage the services and manage the, the interface for the customer on their behalf. Um, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, the de facto standard is QR code. It is. It is. And, and there's reasons for that, uh, other than the fact that it, any camera can read a QR code. And, and jump to a URL. That's that's one of the benefits of the Android operating system and even the uh, Apple operating system, to be honest. But that portal to uh, instant mobility and instant deployment is is part of that process. But you still have to stand up all of the features of that QR code before you deploy it. It's not like you can just pull one off the web. There's still a lot of work that has to be done there. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. It's, uh, there's a process to go through. Yeah, I, I think I think you both summarized uh, very well. I would say that, that there are aspects. It, it, it sounds simple when we develop the tools and all sitting it remotely, but when you really take an organization and they're doing hundreds and thousands of devices, and you want to replicate this across all these policies and all, I think I think some uh, time from how you are seeing your customers, I think Peter from implementation point of view, I think. That, that's where the devil is in the details kind of thing, right? So you, <laughs> you, 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 you have these tools, but at the end of the day, still there is a method to the madness. How do you put together the tools? And I, I think that's where uh, OEMs continue to evolve, continues to work with uh, our partners like uh, Google and Qualcomm's of the world and uh, try to develop the tools. And I'm sure uh, people, uh, uh, barcoding and Peter, like uh, with you, how you work with the customers, there has to put together, there has to be a process so that they can deploy it across multiple devices and make them easy for the IT people to administrate and enroll and um, if the a worker leaves the organization, how do you get it out and how do you track the device, how do you uh, lock the device, wipe the device, all these things. Um, I, I think that these are the aspects, that they, uh, that, that's what people don't understand. I'm using my device, personal device, I'm doing well. What is the big deal kind of thing? But it, it basically, when you scale it up across organization, across people uh, geographically, uh, staying apart and giving these devices and try to manage them. That's where the basically the, the crux of the problem comes and it appears. And I'm pretty sure IT people know this. And that's where I guess our tools and your success, your strategies of uh, helping the customers together and uh, basically will come into the uh, help the customers basically. Yeah, I and mean, we're trying to alleviate a lot of fears from the IT department because they're taking a expensive device and putting it in the hands of an essential worker not just to get their jobs done, but to hopefully at the end of their shift, return that device and, and pass it on to the next user instead of you know, leaving it in their locker or other things. Um, so part of what we offer in, in our solution set with that, that EMM and MDM type solutions is, hey, where is this device now? And who's got it? And you know, what's, the, what's the life cycle of this device? Are the batteries running low? Has it had multiple drops recently? Um, has someone thrown it across the room? You know, these are things that you can actually track using the IoT on the device. Um, to add visibility to how is your fleet doing? What's the health of that fleet of devices? I mean, it used to be that you, at the end of your shift, you'd take your device and put it in your drawer, lock your drawer up for the night because it was your device, right? Um, that doesn't happen anymore because now you've got to hand that device off to somebody else because there's three shifts running now. And you can't just have three shifts worth of devices out there with two shifts worth just sitting on the shelf waiting to be charged. So there's a whole ecosystem around supporting these devices and making sure that they're in use and maintain that ability to be in use. And that's, that's all part of what we offer as a service. And that's part of the way the infrastructure is set up. Yeah. Um, and but I mean, these aren't we're disposable. All, we're all nodding our heads. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and I think that it really, the really vital thing is that, you know, there's, there's a huge amount of pressure right now for, gosh, a variety of reasons, right? We don't have enough workers. We have more that we need to ship than ever before. We have supply chain, you know, kinks and, and 
challenges. E-commerce, and, e-commerce. Yeah, right, e-commerce and omni-channel, blah, 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 right? All this stuff. Well, you know, everything that we all just talk about is just specific to the device, right? So if, and, I, if, if, and this is kind of talking and, and we'll dive a little bit into this conversation because I think data logic has a good perspective, but if you're trying to figure out not only how do I, you know, how do I afford to expand mobility into all these different areas of my organization, but I also have all, you know, digital transformation and driving towards digital maturity may mean that it's a better business decision to allow companies like barcoding to manage a lot of this because you also have all these other jobs to do um, to, to drive the organization forward. So if you're an IT director, you've got, you know, you can't get to all your projects, right? So how do you smartly outsource? And then how do you actually come up with that total cost of ownership in terms of the actual devices themselves that are the tools to get the job done, right? And I know Raju, you have, a, you know, a, you, you can present data logics point of view on this, but total cost of ownership is much more complicated, I think, than some people think, you know, they may just think it's the cost of the device, but it's not really, it's not really that. Yeah, I, I think you, that, that, that's a right, right question. Um, basically, what happens is, uh, as a consumer, we have a view of the world. But when you are a, in, a, in the part of a enterprise and all, the TCO becomes much more um, nuanced and much more important. The reason is, uh, there are various aspects of uh, not only just uh, you know, uh, the processor, uh, all the things you want to uh, look at a device, what for the, your application, what you want to run and all the checks and things you do, specs you read. But at the end of the day, it's just that these devices are not easily changed in a one, two years. They are going to be basically handled for five to seven years. And typically enterprises, they want to run the device as long as possible. So that because it's, it's more of a, it's a, it's, it's a, people look at it like a must, more like a cost than the uh, profit kind of thing. But end of the day, it, it, when you are making those kind of decisions, these uh, things come into picture of how do we manage it? How do we maintain it? How do we secure it? And uh, the, there are aspects of it. Even OEMs are releasing our uh, new software releases. We are doing new patches. There is a onus on the enterprise. So to just go get those patches and software upgrades to deploy across all these devices and try to make it. I'm sure I can see Peter is already making the uh, more Sorry. faces to see that these are all the aspects you have to consider as part of the TCO. And, uh, and then this is where basically all these tools and what we are trying to do, what, what we are basically creating and continue to create in future, these are the basically aspects of it to address those issues so that the TCO for the enterprise will be as much as lower as possible. And at, at the same time, they are making their processes and methods uh, more efficient, more uh, uh, worker friendly, so that it's easy to deploy, easy to manage. I'm sure Peter, you can um, continue talk about well, your uh, you understanding just, of what you were thinking about. Yeah, just just that whole consumer thing that you talked about is, is interesting because from the executive level, everyone is used to working with a consumer grade Android phone or, or an Apple phone, whatever it might be. But what they don't consider is the fact that most of those people, including myself, like to trade off our phones every two to three years. We just, rather than upgrading them in place or work, you know, or applying the duct tape to them to keep them functional, uh, we just get a new one. Well, at an enterprise level, that's a large expense to reinvest you know, and turn over your hardware on a regular basis. It's just, it's just not done. And the idea of being able to do in-place upgrades and in-place security patches on a fleet of three or four devices, yeah, I think I can handle that myself. 300 devices, a thousand? I want somebody who knows what they're doing and I wanna be able to deploy this in a way that happens seamlessly to the end users so they don't have to worry about it. Their stuff just continues to run. That's a workload for IT. And if mobile devices are only a portion of what IT does, I think, what's our favorite phrase here, Jody? Um, something about IT. It is, uh, if IT doesn't have to do everything, IT can do anything. Right. And, and I'd much prefer at an enterprise level for IT to be focused on business, not infrastructure. So they need to be making sure that all the pipes are flowing, that the data is coming into the system from all of their partners, that all of their um, you know, data elements are 
correctly updated for GS1 standards, for example, so that they can continue to scan and use those products as they're being received and function. But they shouldn't have to worry about keeping their devices alive. That should be something where the mainline supervisor basically says, here's your device, and if it's not working, give it back to me. And oh, by the way, uh, we had to turn that device in and have the battery swapped out because according to barcoding, um, that particular battery is worn out and needs to be replaced. You know, being able to do that kind of uh, feedback to the customers on what the health and security is of their devices to keep the uptime consistent, rather than having a box of non-working devices in a drawer somewhere that gets shipped out for a repair once a month. Um, we want to help manage that process to keep it smooth and keep the operation alive and, and functional. Um, data logics tools make that possible because it, it's fairly easy to keep these things updated if you know what's going on. Um, and data logic has the connections with Google um, and, and with the other OEMs to make sure that everything that functions continues to function through the security updates. They test all of this stuff. They don't just, you know, give us random things to try. Um, so it's, it's making use of that industry experience to keep that platform, to keep that, ex that customer experience fully operational. That, that's, we're all about that operational readiness thing, not only at the start of the project, but as it goes through real time life cycles. Yeah, really well said. And I think we talk about, we always say process people and technology. And so I think if you, you know, for our audiences listening, you can see that there's, you know, this is really, this is, these are strategic business decisions that have to be made to, to drive towards that operational excellence. And they, there's a lot of, you know, time, there's this quantitative look at it, right? So what is the actual cost of the device, the service contract, et cetera. And there's, the, there's this qualitative aspect of, you know, what is that experience of the user and how is that life cycle going to impact that? And, you know, really, how do I start to manage that? And that's where this blend of like the real technical piece and the real business piece comes together. And I think for those listening, I mean, this is where IT, I think their role is expanding and they need to be able to think uh, strategically around the business um, in addition to knowing all the technical aspects. And I'm assuming Raju and Tom, you're seeing this with your customer base as well. Yeah, go back to that pain threshold conversation, right? Yeah. We want, yep. we want, to, we want to at least pain as possible, right? <laughs> yes. And, and you got to bring that down to the end user experience too. I mean, we're talking about this full life cycle management thing. Well, we have a relationship with our customers. They've got the devices, we're keeping them running. And we have periodic discussions saying, well, where are you seeing places that you could improve? What would you like to do in your operations? I mean, would you like us to you know, do a walkthrough or just a visual walkthrough on what your operation looks like today? And then we can make recommendations. I mean, if they've already deployed a bunch of member 10 devices and they're using them in the field and they're doing a lot of fast pick or each pick, I'll say, well, how would you like to make those devices hands-free? I mean, there's solutions for that. Now you can not only make use of your initial investment, but you can tack on a little bit more to get a lot more out of it. Right. And, and that's, and what that, are, that's that going back to that business school, right? So yep. where can I improve the operations and then how can technology play a role in doing that and getting us there? So what, what's the data logic solution for that hands-free operation? I mean, I, I know physically what it's, what it involves in terms of strapping the device on my forearm or wearing it on my waist, <laughs> but what's the rest of that? Well, it's a hand scanner, so you're going to put it on your hand. It's, it's a Vel Velcro attached uh, device of Bluetooth that would connect to a, a mobile device that's on your arm. Okay, so our wearable solutions of, uh, well, basically that's it. That's that's what it is. It's, it, it's basically- it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a member 10, it could be a member 20. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's basically a force multiplier repeater. I mean, obviously we want to give uh, the operator more, both hands to be free so that he has more things right. to do. He can, right. he, he can easily do his operation. That's where- right what Tom was talking about hand scan comes into picture and it can work with any of our PDA devices. And uh, it's easy to deploy and easy to, uh, you know, like you said, uh, on the back of your palm, uh, basically you put it on, on a Velcro and you can use it to uh, basically say picking, sorting, whatever the, the worker is trying to do that is going to help and enhance his productivity. Basically. Yeah, and, it must uh, be Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, it might be useful to give the audience just like a brief window into kind of the data logic um, mobile mobile space, right? So for those who are hearing us say the word memor and don't know what that is, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, maybe maybe give us give us a little back background on on your on your solutions. 
Yeah, uh, Jody, like, uh, I, you know, the, one of the leading players in the, the industry, we have, um, basically, we have PDTs, PDAs, and PSS, like personal shopping devices, and vehicle-mounted computing. We basically do all, we play in all the, those uh, aspect product, li product uh, uh, lines, and we are basically mainly targeted towards manufacturing, p and uh, warehousing, uh, retail, obviously, bulk of it. Um, so in this PDS space, uh, you have your, your tiers, your low tier, mid tier, high tier, with the features, processors, memory, display size. So we, we, we have uh, devices for the design in all these tiers to basically solve the user problems. And de depending upon the use case, the customers have a choice and what are their preference, what they want to run and what they're using it for. They can pick up any of these devices, number 10 being a majority workhorse device for us and member 20 is one of the TNL and all specialized applications. But across the portfolio, we have devices designed for all these verticals to, um, um, to solve the customer problems. And uh, like Tom said, obviously not only we are the hardware manufacturer, we are developing the tools for the OEM tools and in conjunction with what the Google is trying to do on the Android ecosystem, we are basically bringing not only just to consuming the device, but easy to deploy, easy to manage. And that's where the word TCO comes into picture. How do they deploy, manage in a cost efficient manner for them, for their operation and all. And then that's where basically uh, in the value chain barcoding and you guys come into picture where to advise the customers, what device, what process, what they're trying to do so that you can put together the picture for them and solve the problem kind of thing. Yeah. And, I mean uh, we, uh, this is where I just wanted to. Now I don't want to forget, but we want to. I want to talk about the other aspect of it, and then more than maybe in the next we can talk is what where the future part, the side up also. So I, I'll let you guys talk. Then I have some ideas on how where this is all going into the future. How finally it ties into this digital transformation. So go ahead, Peter. You want so to I was going to say uh, one of the things that that barcoding does is like we've got a lot of customers who are running NetSuite and the NetSuite. Uh, uh, mobility suites, supply chain mobility. Um, they're not geared up to make a huge range of decisions on what's the perfect device for their environment. I mean, there's a wide range of things they could do from running tablets with attached Bluetooth scanners, all the way down to having that hands-free worn device. And it's a, it's a, it's really a bewildering way of choices. And what we like to do is focus that down to, okay, based upon your use case, based upon the other two, three, 4,000 customers we've got, um, this is probably the best solution for you to start with. And if you're in more of an industrial environment, okay, we'd go to a, a more gun style format because that's what your end users are used to working with in that space. Um, and we guide those choices to make sure that they're going down the smooth path to get to a solution. But we also have to step back and go, well, what environment is that, in, that company working in? Are they making use of GS1 standards? Are they aware of where the optimizations are built into that crowdsourced or, or um, you know, world global organization set of standards, ways of doing things um, that would make their life simpler if they tapped into that. I mean, the biggest example I have is that, that QR code or, or a data matrix barcode that has multiple fields in a single barcode. It used to be if you were, especially in the automotive industry, I mean, we're going back a few years now, you'd scan the purchase order number, then you'd scan the item number, then you'd scan the lot number, then you'd scan the serial number, then you'd scan the expiry number, then you'd scan the revision date. I mean, you'd have to scan six things just to bring a box into the factory. Now it's a 2D barcode, you scan one, one single scan and that box is now inducted into your inventory. That's where the GS1 standards come in because rather than having to invent the wheel for every partner, we have a standard way of consuming this information and sharing this information up and down the supply chain. And this extends into RFID and even IoT. We have ways of sharing this information across the supply chain so I don't have to keep translating every time it crosses my, my doorstep. I mean, that, that threshold of pain of not being able to receive a product because you can't identify it because they didn't give a label that you recognize is really a silly way to, to, to have problems in your supply chain. It, it's totally eliminatable if you pay attention to GS1 standards. GTINs, UPC codes, whatever you want to call them, there are standards for identifying and consuming this type of information across the supply chain, and you have to tap into those. Yeah, well, one thing that um, that I really appreciate about the DataLogic Barcoding Partnership with um, our, our NetSuite customers is we have simplified that experience, and we know based on 
um, all the other customers that we work with and, and you know, which choices are going to be, you know, really, really valid. And some of that is, as you mentioned, you know, your scan needs may be different now. Um, where, you know, do you need short, you know, close range, do you need long range, all these kinds of things. Well, we've, we've kind of solved that for, you know, customers on the NetSuite side. And that's something, that's the kind of the power of working with partners like Barcode and DataLogic, where we're going to be able to simplify that process for you, eliminate that pain, right, Tom? And, and just that's where, you know, okay, that's where we're starting. We need the right infrastructure. And then um, this partnership also allows for us to get the devices in the hands of the users and get them working, which is really the most vital part. All right, so uh, Raja, you, you kind of, you hinted at it and, uh, you know, if people were paying attention, they probably got excited because we started to hint at what might be coming down the road. Um, so looking at from a data logic perspective, um, and I'll start with you, Raju, is kind of give us that peek into what's on your brain for next year and beyond. Um, uh, that could be from a data logic perspective, that could be from your perspective. And uh, you have to unmute as well. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was getting mail notifications. I was trying to mute it. No, no worries. <laughs> We're all used to that by now, right? <laughs> So this is where I think uh, the, the reason why I jumped the gun there a couple of minutes back, Peter mentioned a very good aspect of it, right? Like it's not the, the deployment aspect for sure, no doubt. We, we like, we talked a lot about it. We OEMs are creating tools and you guys have expertise to educate the, uh, the end users how to do that, right? But there is like, like Peter pointed out, there is more um, the, the devices themselves and the, the tools they have and the application they have they're becoming intelligent, and there is a basically more and more uh, enterprise are demanding. How do we uh, not only deploy these two? How do we make more use of them? Uh, for example, uh, we used to say maybe 18 months the battery has to be changed, kind of thing. Once upon a time, not anymore. You have tools now where you can go and deploy where the it can read from the battery. It can read from the device how many cycles the battery went through. What is the life cycle left and all? What is the, um, uh, uh, how efficient the battery has been using? There are those kind of uh, invest, a, a, a basically information can be pulled from the devices so that we can go and uh, see that we don't have to change the battery by 18 months. The, if the device is not used and it still has more life on it, th that itself is a, a cost saving for the organization. And like that, now we have a, this cloud, cloud that has become pretty much uh, uh, omni, omnipresent everywhere. And everybody is trying to do cloud uh, deployment tools and all. It's much easier to gather that kind of information. And then you can do run, run some algorithms, give reports back to the organization to see how they're being used, how what they're being used so that they can make decisions on the uh, hardware they spent and the application they're uh, basically they spend money on and how their workers are using it so that they can make intelligent decisions. I think that, that's where basically the, the future is going to be. We will have, um, we are, we are working on a system to basically make sure that uh, uh, that gets implemented in all our devices so that uh, they can be, uh, OEMs can take advantage of that and they can basically efficiently uh, deploy where the, the, the devices need to be and uh, how they're performing, they can monitor them and uh, when they need to be replaced kind of thing. I think, I think Peter, I'm sure uh, this is not the first time you are hearing this. Uh, uh, you, you we are hearing it from other OEMs and uh, and uh, what customers are asking for it. You can be able to easily comment on this. Yeah, I mean, we saw some changes due to COVID. Um, yeah. We wanted yeah. customers, we had customers who said, hey, um, I don't want my employees coming into the break room all at once mm -hmm. um, just to sign in. Is there a way we can put sign in on that mobile device? And, and we found solutions to do that. Um, you know, being able to maintain safe proximity is, is, is fairly easy to do if you put some thought into it. And these are no longer single use devices. You can run multiple applications on that same framework, just like on your phone, you're doing banking, you're doing communications with friends and family, you're looking up Instagram. Now these are bad choices for a shared device, but I'm just kind of giving you some examples. I mean, you might be tying into HR for logging in in the morning or getting, you know, uh, push to device notifications. You might be tying into the ERP system to do your inventory control functions or uh, maybe opening up or, or docking that device in some way, manner, shape, or form and using a larger screen. I mean, there's a lot of different possibilities available now for these mobile computers. I mean, it's a supercomputer in your hands. Using it for only one thing is kind of a silly waste of that total cost of ownership. 
So more and more customers are asking, how can I maximize the use of this device in my environment to give my workers a better experience overall? Not just get the inventory moving, but handling things like communications to the team, handling things like um, basic you know, COVID safety checklists. Did you wipe down your surfaces when you were done today? Do you have a mask? Are you having a cold right now? Do you have sniffles? Are you feeling well? Do you have a temperature? Walking through these questions are actually part of a sign-on for some people. That's what they do. And rather than doing it at a kiosk, as they walk into the building, they're all lined up, you know, six feet apart, stretching around the block. They come in, they go to their lockers, they pick up their device and they're doing it on their device. Yeah. So if you, if you thought of, you know, if your first thought, you know, when you saw us, you know, on this huddle and you thought data logic and you thought scanning, right. Which would be fair, right. Still really great applications uh, there. We love scanning. Um, but I think what you're seeing is that it's the, the, the world has really opened up. And so um, the, the, I think what has occurred in many organizations is these devices were bought as scanners, right. Um, and there are true pe- true scanners that are only used for scanning, of course, but a lot of times what, what people were really thinking about when they said they were buying a scanner is they were actually buying a mobile computer. And that's where I think this idea of let's explore what's possible because we now have a computer in someone's hands versus a single purpose scanner, right? And then that, um, if you're listening and you've been thinking about things and wondering, could I do this? Or I wonder if if this, if anyone's thought about this, to Raji's point, we probably have been thinking about it. We've probably heard it from other customers um, and there's probably a lot more possible maybe than you even realize. So Tom, I, I'm gonna pass this over to you too. You know, talk us through from your perspective, what you're kind of thinking about for next year and into the, into the future of, of what's possible, what's going to be possible for folks. Well, we're always looking for ways to make things better for our end users, right? And companies. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, for instance, uh, we have a product we call Visual Formatter. Uh, today, it's available that will allow you to massage scanned data. Uh, like you take a GS1 barcode, and it might be something that you want to do to that barcode data after it's scanned. We have those capabilities today. All right. Um, so things like that. But but Google is a is a moving target. Right. It's 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 always changing. It's Peter, as you well know. Mm-hmm. And so we're, it's not like we're keeping up. We know what's coming. Um, and we're always adding things to our tools uh, to, to meet the next OS version uh, that Google comes out with. We're ready for it, okay? And we're making changes to our OEM config, the things that, that, that are not requirements, right? Like putting a file in a particular folder on the device. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, some EMMs do that automatically and some of them don't. Okay, uh, being able to send an intent to a device, uh, mm-hmm. being, to, being able to use a, a, a configuration from our scan to deploy tool in the EMM, right? Because some cu- customers may not want to use OEM config. They may not want to go that far. So if, if they wanted to, to, to define things within their device, they're going to have to have some other way to do it. And so we provide those things. These are the kind of things that we're working on constantly. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of tools that are part of the Android operating system that from my phone's point of view, I can't touch. I can't get at those settings. But in an Android enterprise experience, somebody on the management side needs to be able to get at those settings and set those restrictions and make them global. Um, You know, we do. We do that all the time. For instance, if you want to change the display density of your device, we can do that through a set setting command. So we can reach down into ADB and we can do things that you don't normally have access to, like Peter said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and nobody tell wants us, to build just, out just XML files. Just tell us files. what you need, okay? Yeah, and I and you know I think that's what maybe um, what I'm hoping you know the audience is is hearing is that um, you know, think when you think data logic, there you know think about all all of that's possible, and I think that there's a lot more than meets the eye um, when it comes to the capabilities that are coming to the table, right? And this is why, you know, we, we love this partnership is because, you know, barcoding, one, you're helping us, right, help our customers, which is always important when we're doing things at scale. Um, but of course, you know, you guys do have your pulse on, on what's coming and, and we know that, that our customers can feel secure in that. So that's, it's just, it's really, I think even from, for our team, you know, it's just great to hear all the things that are coming, Tom, or that are available right now that people may not actually be aware of and 
they can get they can get going on it right away mm-hmm. <laughs> which is awesome i get on my soapbox every day but <laughs> Not everyone hears me every day, okay? So <laughs> that's why we, we put you on the huddle. We wanted to yeah. give you a broadcast. <laughs> broadcast the soapbox. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I um we obviously really barcoding, we truly appreciate our partnership with Data Logic and, and this has been a great huddle. I think it's been a really uh, good thing that we're recording this because there's a lot. To digest, and uh, and I and you'll have the access to this to to rewatch it and kind of have, you know, kind of dive into those topics a little bit more. Um, but I want to I want to kind of close up our conversation today, and I want to little paint maybe a little scenario, and say, okay, we started this conversation around digital transformation and operational excellence, right? Um, so let's say I'm an organization, and you know, I've been doing some some good stuff. I do have mobility in my organization. I am scanning today, um, but I know that I need to keep improving, right? And I need to find new ways to, to drive that operational excellence. Um, where should, and I'm, I'm gonna start with Peter, where should I start in terms of thinking, where can I p- potentially improve? What are maybe some questions I can ask myself to, to get the ball rolling? You know, where, where should I kind of focus? So I want you to focus from that customer experience and think about the end user and the environment that they're working in is, I mean, at the real basic level, if you brought in a brand new employee, would they be able to navigate in that environment and go from place to place? Are there clear signs up telling them where they are and where they need to go when they get to a shelf, if they get to a storage location, is there a barcode on that location that actually matches up to what the inventory says is a barcode location? Or do you have three or four different generations of previous attempts kind of stuck on that same post? Um, I mean, starting at a real fundamental level, is your environment ready? Do you have enough Wi-Fi? Do you have enough lighting? Um, you know, do you have enough devices? Do you have enough workers? I mean, that's, that's the basic stuff. But now you expand beyond that. You've already got mobility in place. Are there things you can do like adding in goods to person? Is this a process you might want to get some some mobile robots on the floor to take out that travel time where employees are wasting literally precious time moving a box from where they filled it to where it needs to go out the shipping dock. Why not have them continue to focus on their next pick or their next pack operation and stay in situ and and functional rather than taking that long walk back to the other end of the factory. Yep. So of course, you know, barcoding our brains always going to that to that space of process and people. Um, Raju, from your perspective, what are some of the things that you would kind of counsel someone to think about um, so that they could get, you know, they could get the ball rolling and figuring out where to drive continuous improvement? I, I think Peter did a fantastic job, right? He talked about the last mile solution, how actually an enterprise has to, the what are the vision they have and how they can help their customers, how do they better sell the customers to make it. And uh, like he talked about, uh, uh, lighting, you talked about barcoding. It, it, it's very interesting to even I'm learning some stuff that how it is actually implemented. And for, like OEM, like data logic for us, that is where we come into picture and saying that the tools and the devices, the hardware, whatever you guys are basically when you're designing for the end customer, how do we improve them? How do we get them with the right uh, performance specs, features, and uh, tools so that that's easy for you to take it and to implement. Uh, the vision part of it and make it a reality to the your customer basically our together our customer should I say so that 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 that's a that's a constant challenge and that's constantly evolving and uh, obviously when our lives are already uh, jam packed we have things like COVID thrown at us to uh, figure it out and make it a reality mm-hmm. so in that how the organizations are changing to serve their customers we are also working and we are also trying to make sure that we are addressing the pain points and uh, creating new uh, on, uh, tools, software, hardware to uh, uh, make it uh, everything process painless as well as seamless. So Tom, from us, maybe from a services perspective, if I'm, if I'm that company or that IT director, where, where would you counsel me to kind of start or what questions should I ask myself? Well, I'm gonna give Peter kudos again. All right. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fine too. <laughs> Peter did a great job. It's all about right? You have to look at the workflow of your, your operation and where can I improve it and how can, you know, I can use uh, enterprise uh, mobility to, to do that. Um, and then the management of it comes into play. And, and like Peter said, you always have to think about your Wi-Fi. 
your infrastructure does it does it support the things that you need to do to get from point A to point B? Um, I don't think there's a whole lot else to add to that. Uh, and the, the tools that we have, I, I can add to that. Oh, okay. I always can. <laughs> I mean, the tools that we have in place now are now able to give us a lot of diagnostic information on how well they're working in the environment. So I mean, if you're running an MDM and you've got a solution back there that's actually gathering data on how well these devices are used, you can discover either devices that work poorly in certain locations within your warehouse, if you've got that kind of visibility over your operation, to know where you need to start tuning things up. Um, having that kind of visibility, that IoT stuff to give you health data on not just the device, but the fleet of devices, and sometimes even the operation as a whole can come from just information off that device that's tangential to the work they're doing. Um, amazing what we can do now using that same initial investment of here's a mobile computer, get your job done. Oh, by the way, we're paying attention to how well this device is working so that we can make sure it continues to work for you. Um, yeah. It's all part of that process now. Yeah, uh, I agree. And and the last thing we would want is for someone to say, gosh, this thing just never works. <laughs> right. And that that's that's not what we want. So um if and and you know, there is a lot to think about. And one of the things that I've always felt coming out of conversations like this is that if, if it feels overwhelming to you out there and, and you're thinking, gosh, I never thought about that, or that could be another gotcha that I, I really wasn't considering. This is why these partnerships exist. This is why companies like barcoding exist is to help you navigate through this because it's not going to get easier. It's going to get more complex as we can do more and more things, right? And, and there's more and more security enhancements and there's more and more, um, you know, the life cycles continue to increase. So this is why we're here. This is, mm -hmm. a, this is what we love to do. We do it day in and day out. Um, Tom Raju do this day in, day out. This is what we all live and breathe. And so um, turn to us. We're here to help and, um, and we want to help. So um, that's my little plug. We have, you know, our go live services and our stay live services are 100% are built to take that weight off your shoulders. So we are coming up on time and um, I'm going to give each of you the opportunity to kind of summarize our conversation. And I'm going to make it a little bit difficult because I like to throw a little, you know, last minute wrench your way. Um, I'm thinking no more than five words. Um, what are, what's that final piece of advice or that final takeaway, you know, summarized that you want the audience to remember? Um, and just to give our guests, DataLogic, a little more time to think, I'm gonna start with Peter. And so less than five words, what, what would, how would you summarize the conversation or provide a takeaway? Focus on supporting continuous improvement. Ah, right on the right on the money. I love it. I love it. That's a good one. Okay, Tom, how about you? I'm going to give you four words. Okay. Android Enterprise is awesome. Ah, excellent. We 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 do love Android Enterprise. <laughs> Android Enterprise is awesome. And Raju, I'm going to give you the final words. So, what what would you say? They didn't utilize their five words, so I'm going to take seven words. <laughs> uh, digital transformation, mobile computing, they go hand in hand, basically. Digital transformation, enterprise mobility, computing all together, hand in hand. Um, you guys out there can summarize that yourselves <laughs> to less than five words. <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you again to our partner, DataLogic, for sponsoring this, this month's huddle. We really appreciate you and I'm glad we could dive into your enterprise mobility and all of the work that you're doing to make life easier on the deployment side. Um, Peter, thanks for your time as well. Um, great, great resource here at Barcoding. So, um, you know, reach out if you if you really want to kind of tap into his expertise that he brings to the table. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe. We um, we love new subscribers and we always have new content coming out. So don't miss there. And finally, um, we're here to help. So reach out to us on barcoding.com if you have any questions at all, or if you'd like to reach DataLogic, you can reach them through us and we'll get the ball rolling for you. Um, so we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again, Tom, Raju, Peter. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks, Yuri. Thanks for the next time. Thanks, Yuri. Guys. Bye. Hi. Did you enjoy the huddle? I sure hope so. We were really excited to have you as part of our conversation and would love to continue it. If you have a question or a challenge that you're facing and barcoding can help you out, 
please reach out. You can contact us on barfooting.com anytime or any of our social media channels. Again, we're, we are here to help and would love to chat with you. Final ideas. Did you like the huddle so much you wanted to join? Do you want to come on air with me? Do you know someone who would be a great fit or a topic that you'd like to see covered? If so, reach out to me um, via email or LinkedIn, and I am happy to uh, check in with you and, and talk through what we might be able to accomplish together. I would love to hear your ideas. We are always looking for new topics. So if you have an idea for huddle or you'd like to be on a huddle, contact me and we will make it happen. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.